What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear here today with another fantastic hobby tutorial. Happy Hobby Hump Day, of course this is the second best day of the week if you ask Kenny Boucher. But here at uh, Spiky Bits, I, I feel like it's the first. <laughs> so if you're watching this video, you either pretty much tune into the channel every week, thank you obviously, or you're checking it out because you just picked up an airbrush and you want to learn, hey what do I do now? <laughs> I heard about this airbrushing thing, it seems pretty cool, but um, I just realized I might be in over my head a little bit, <laughs> which I can completely understand. Not all of us have a Kenny Boucher on speed dialing. So, little secret, or not really a secret, pretty much everything I learned about airbrushing was from Kenny, uh, you know, that I haven't extrapolated myself from trial and error, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, it was kind of like a different, for me, changing my paint style from strictly layering to, you know, a mixture of layering and air airbrushing was, um, well, it was a time saver first off, but it, I, it really, you know, upped my kind of quality level and my paint game, so to speak, you know, it, it really is true. Like you can get more stuff done and you can actually do a whole lot more. Now recently I was able, <laughs> kind of by necessity, to pick up a new airbrush and what I learned was I was like hey this is a perfect opportunity there's so many people out there picking up airbrushes for the first time maybe we'll go over hey what do you do now that you have your airbrush now that now this isn't a tutorial on how to airbrush like hey let's put some paint let's go at it like Kenny does that every week you know like I can't do that better than Kenny but what I can do is show you the basics on how to basically set up your airbrush for the first time um, how to clean it you know some care for it and stuff like that you know just basic hobby airbrushing tips and tricks so to speak on how to get you up and running and what you need to do and how to keep your you know airbrush clean what to clean it with mistakes I've made in the past so you don't have to repeat them and speaking of mistakes it's funny because I actually recorded this tutorial uh, a couple weeks ago but then recently I say I'm, I'm I say hey you know keep this end off of your your airbrush here it's it protects your needle it's a needle guard basically and I'm like yo just take that off and because it doesn't do anything practical when you're actually airbrushing and such because it kind of restricts you know I'm always in here messing with the needle itself but it, as it turns out it actually performs one super important function and that is uh, to protect the needle from you but maybe more importantly you from the needle because as it happens you might notice this little scratch up here as much as I would like to say that's from a cat, it's from this needle right here because I was stupid and I bent over while it was in its little holder and I actually brushed up against it pretty forcefully. And I'm actually lucky I didn't lose my eye to be quite honest because that's uh, that's pretty close right there. So it's uh, it's one of those things you don't really think about until it happens, but if you're not using your airbrush or even if you are using your airbrush, you might want to consider keeping that keeping that end on there. I, I know I uh, definitely will think twice about it now, but that's uh, that's definitely the one thing I wanted to, a little caveat I wanted to throw in there on this tutorial. Now, <laughs> now that that has happened, and you can definitely see it on my head right there, so. <laughs> oh man, let's just pretend it's a cat scratch, it's fine, it's no big deal. That didn't happen. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump right into it. So now we're going to take a look at the airbrush and uh, this is the Iwata HPCS uh, Eclipse. It's, uh, it's a really good high quality airbrush. It goes for about 150 bucks uh, at most stores. I think you can get it on Amazon for maybe a couple bucks cheaper or whatever. But you know, try to support your local stores where you, where you can. Now if you look inside here, you can definitely notice that there is something wrong. <laughs> uh, the coating on the inside of this airbrush has been eroded away. Now whether it's from using uh, abrasive cleaners and or using a sonic uh, wave uh, jewelry cleaner and dipping it in it and cleaning it out um, that did that and removed the actual stainless steel coating from the innards like completely inside you can see down in there it took it off of everything. So. Um, I'm sure they use some sort of electro electrolyzing process to plate the stainless steel onto this and I think I might have uh, using the sonic cleaner reverse that process so be careful when you're using the sonic cleaners on this stuff it might not be a good idea now you could use it on some of the component parts perhaps and I'm not advocating this but stuff that doesn't have a coating like uh, some of the stuff on the insides here might be okay to use um, a little bit of a uh, debris there on the on the needle no big deal so actually what I did was I was having a conference with uh, Kenny uh, Next Level Painting 
about I was having some problems pushing paint and he's just like man I just don't get it why your stuff doesn't work sometimes and I'm like I sent him a picture of this he's like ugh that's like a 10 year old airbrush dog and I'm like hmm maybe it's time to maybe it's time to get something new so today on the channel we have how to set up your brand new airbrush because guess what I went out uh, to my local hobby town here in Fayetteville North Carolina a fantastic place that I like to frequent and I picked up a brand new Iwata HPCS this is what it looks like if you buy it in uh, the normal box set. It comes with a little bit of lube, which is fine. Uh, I like, I prefer to use hops number nine because it's a cleaner uh, degreaser and lubricator as well. So it gets junk out, but it also lubricates. And uh, it comes with a little chuck here to um, take the uh, take the tip off right there. I had long since lost mine, so I was just using needle nose pliers. But what I wanted to show you in this segment was basically how to set up your airbrush uh, to get ready to basically push some paint through it. So we'll be right back with that. So step one is to basically take this thing off on the back here. It's just basically like a needle chuck protector, but what it does is actually hampers your ability to do anything useful in my opinion. Um, you can tell here from this action, it's uh, it's pretty smooth. It's probably come pre-lubricated from the, from the factory here. I'm gonna check the tip out and it seems like it's got some really good motion in there. It's not getting stuck on anything. It's nice and clean. More importantly, as you can see inside of here, nothing is stripped out. So we're looking good to go there. The tip of the everything in here is looking good. Now I'm not sure if this will separate oh, the actual nozzle did right here, which is uh, really interesting that that actually came off. I don't normally do that. So I'm going to carefully place that one back on there normally I don't really mess with that that particular part there only if I need to pull out the um, the one piece on the inside here so I'm just going to show you some some typical maintenance on this thing as we go to get it started now this thing you don't want to over chuck um, you don't want to over tighten so a lot of times what I do is I get it close and then I just kind of hand crank it and uh, just get it on there because you don't want it to be too tight and that can become quite an issue. When you're working on your insides, always pull back your needle and lock it in so you don't have to worry about anything bad happening there. So we're gonna pull this out and there you can see the brass, um, I think they call this the nozzle. It's basically what directs the airflow and this this looks pretty clean. It's, uh, it's, it's way better condition than the one in my other airbrush. So I'm just gonna put that back in there. You can see the O-ring, you can see some grease in there just to keep it all lubricated. We're going to line this up very gently and like I said, get it down to a point here and then kind of hand twist it and give it one nice little torque. You don't want to do it too heavy. So there we go. And uh, this this airbrush right here should be ready to go except for one little thing. And I'm going to put the needle back in there. Except for one little thing and that's uh, your air hose. Now one of the best things you can do once you're uh, setting up your airbrush is grab you some Teflon tape from the store it's really easy it's about um, I don't know a couple bucks just tell them Teflon tape it's usually in the plumbing section you can tear it off you don't need any special tools or anything and what's this gonna do is make sure that you have a super airtight seal around your air hose here and the stuff like literally basically go, goes around those grooves there you can see it in the camera and we're just gonna wrap all of that right there another cool tool you can get and I believe this is your standard uh, 3 8 inch um, thread size right here. You can get this thing called a, a quick release valve. Now this is the GMAC from Grex, but like I said, it's kind of a universal thing. So you don't have to super worry about any of that. I'm just going to put it right on here. So I got my Teflon tape. And what this is going to do for me is once I'm ready, you know, at the end of the day, if I want to take this and clean it in the bathroom or go soak it somewhere, I don't really have to, you know, do a whole bunch of twisting or anything to get my cord all braided. I just basically quick release it right off of there. Good to go. And another thing that's kind of cool, and I, I don't really, it doesn't really come into play that much for me, but you can control the airflow from here. A lot of times I just keep it full blast regardless. Um, so I don't quite worry about that, but it's nice to have that kind of, uh, you know, being able to kind of dial that in right from the airbrush instead of reaching down to the compressor and messing around with that. So I'm going to put some Teflon tape on the end here and then attach my air hose and fire up the compressor. So I've taped that all up right there. As you can see, attach my air hose, turn on my compressor and I've got 
a really good seal. I'm not leaking air anywhere. And uh, now we can get down to the business of airbrushing. Now for my compressor, I have a um, I have a Badger air compressor. I think it's a one eighth horsepower uh, compressor with a tank, an air tank. And what's nice about it is, you know, it, you hear it going right now, but what it's going to do is it's going to kick off as it fills up, so it doesn't, you know, constantly stay on. Now you can do a couple of things. Like I have a little fan down there, a little external fan, looks similar to uh, the tabletop ones I use normally uh, to dry off wash and things like that. And I have one down there, and I'll just kick it on when I've been, you know, working for about 45 minutes or so. And what that does is, you know, it helps keep the the uh, the engine and the internal parts kind of cool themselves. You know, it pushes more air over top of the heat sink and just kind of helps out with things. Now, prolonged use, probably not a good idea, but it gives you a little bit extra time, you know, in between you taking breaks. And there it goes, it just kicks off. So I've got the air pressure pulled up all the way to, I think about 60 PSI. And you can tell from here to here, it sounds, you know, it's it's full blast. And, you know, it's one of those things that you, um, a lot of people don't aren't comfortable with it. I wasn't at first. Kenny's like, you you just gotta do it. And I was like, all right, man, I'll try it. And I did a lot of practice writing my name in cursive and things like that. And slowly but surely, I definitely got used to it. Now, you can turn down um, with this little GMAC valve here. You can turn it down to taste or turn it up or really get low right there. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's kind of nice to have that connectivity and that, um, that basically uh, control right up here. But for the most part, I'm just going to be blasting stuff. Now it's time for a color change, and of course we gotta clean out the airbrush itself. Now you notice this is kind of messy, it's not too bad, but we're away from a sink, so we don't have anything like that. Now what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna grab this little, uh, I don't know, gooseneck, uh, we'll go with gooseneck kind of squirt bottle thing, and I'm gonna hose down all up into the reservoir here and get out all those big chunks and the rest of the loose paint and kind of, uh, be able to see down in there all the way which you can see now and then I'm gonna hose it really hard boom and get all that junk out of there in case there's anything big just kind of hiding do that a couple of times give it a couple of rinse and then what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of water in there and come in with a big piece of foam and what that's gonna do is that's gonna get all my chunks out before I start doing any backflow or anything because now you don't have to if you want a nice big fade in between each, um, you know, color change, you really don't have to do this. You can just kind of add a little bit of color to your reservoir and go and just have slight gradations if you're doing working with big flat surfaces. But for this particular one, I was just like, you know what? Let me get this on film. I want to show you guys basically what to do. So now that I've got all my big chunks and I've got the reservoir mostly clean, there's still stuff down in here in the nozzle and everything. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. And what I'm going to do is do this thing called back flush where I put my finger over the front here, push down and bubble off the back. And all that paint that was up in there is now coming out. So I'm gonna do that really forcefully. <laughs> it's like a mountain eruption. I'm gonna get all that junk out there. Now get in here with some water and kind of loosen that up until it starts to get clear again. You can start to see, hey, it's really starting to get cleaner, right? Do a couple more, give it a couple more flushes, work some of that color out of there thus not letting your paint dry in the needle and stuff. And now keep in mind too, I got this little like tray of water here. It's like a double tray, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Um, kind of splashing everywhere. I'm working in my airbrush hood. Normally I would have this on, but for the audio, I, I just didn't wanna, between the compressor and everything going. So now you can see it's got mostly cleaned out. We're gonna hit it a little bit more, do another flush. Now when I pull this needle out, it's gonna get all the stuff on the needle too and there you see that little flush of color I'm gonna pull the needle out hit it with my fingers here and there is a little bit on the end so I want to be careful and just use my finger down just nudge it a little bit not nothing too crazy you gotta be very careful working with the needle here you don't want to mess it up and then when it seats it should seat nice and easy into there I'm gonna lock it back in dump this out. Now there's going to be a little bit of green in here and that's fine because it'll just like work its way through the next coloration which is going to be a brighter green. If I was going to come in with like a white or something I'd be more concerned with getting this cleaner but 
uh, for you know just going green to green I think it's good to go there now that you're all done with your project and you've cleaned out the airbrush as best as you can for you know to basically your completely done with it for the day got all your debris off the needle here the inside looks pretty good I mean it's a little wet but that's whatever at this point um, you're gonna want to basically put this away now you might have stuff down in here that hasn't dried yet or that um, may present a problem in the future and there's a couple different ways you can you can deal with this first off you can grab like a little container Put a little bit of cleaner in here now this is the old purple power i'm not sure it's bad for the insides but this particular piece in here the uh, needle nozzle doesn't have the stainless steel coating on it. it's just a brass fitting it looks like so i'm not you know i'm pretty confident that it it won't hurt that if you let it soak overnight conversely you can do uh the shot glass method where if you want to um just leave it soaking in a shot glass filled with airbrush cleaner i use the vallejo stuff because you know it's basically their stamp of approval you know it won't mess up your airbrush you just basically fill up your airbrush um or your little shot glass right here i'd say about halfway with this right so just hose it down maybe like a quarter of a way and then hit it with some water up till the point where you're going to actually insert your airbrush right so you're gonna basically put it in here but you want to get some of the stuff on the inside just to let everything soak and then you just put it down in there and it's soaking well you can take the needle out too and let that kind of do its uh, its thing too I have my spare one for my old airbrush in here just in case this one gets clogged I can quick uh, switch them out and hopefully get up and running again real quick while the other one soaks and you know basically becomes degreased and things like that so this is basically how I'll leave it you know if you have pets you know make <laughs> Take precautions so that they won't come up and start licking the uh, airbrush cleaner. It can't be good for them, you know. So I try to like keep my stuff inside my airbrush booth and I kind of barricade it in here so that the cats won't come up in here and, and start licking on it and uh, get a bad tummy ache or possibly worse. But that's uh, that's pretty much it right there. You know, wring out all your supplies, dry everything off, and get uh, get everything put away and get ready for our next day of. Uh, airbrushing so hopefully you enjoyed our little tips and tricks on how to get up and running and clean your brand new airbrush today on spiky bits spiky bits make sure you stay in the trenches help keep our channel ad free by becoming a supporter over on patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process subscribe to this youtube channel Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today.